Our next question is, what is pi pi and how can we use it? So we've already seen earlier in this course, I hope you took a look at that question, about modules and what modules are and how they work. So modules are a crucial part of Python. Um, they allow us to dry up our code, they allow us to reuse code, all that good stuff. And Python indeed comes with a whole lot of really useful modules just in the standard library and what comes when you download and install the language. But what if there's functionality that doesn't come with the standard library, but that you know lots of people are going to want? Well, for that, we have PyPI. If I go to PyPI.org, that's the Python Package Index. And I know it's a funny kind of name. I actually just learned recently, in the last year or two, that the name comes from the fact that originally PyPI was pointers to, references to other places on the internet where they had different Python packages, sort of souped up modules or modules with a bit more metadata. That's what a package is, more or less. Um, so it used to refer to them, and at a certain point they realized, well, we should just store them here as well. And so PyPI, as of this recording in uh, late 2019, has more than 208,000 different projects. Wow, that's a lot of projects. Um, we're not going to go through all of them one by one. We're not even going to go through 1% of them. PyPI, though, is an amazing, amazing resource. If you're not using it in your Python program, you're probably doing something wrong. You're probably working too hard. And so you can search for all sorts of stuff in here and you can install it very easily. So I'm just gonna go down here to like trending projects, Python Alipay, ZHinst, Photo Utils, Mini Eraser. You've got also the Pretty Printer. Oh, this looks good, this looks good. So I'm gonna go to the Pretty Printer homepage by clicking on it. And it tells me about it, right? So it's got like, you know, project description if I want. Here we go. We can look at some documentation. Looks like a pretty good system, right? If I look at the release history, we'll see that there are lots and lots of releases as well. Um, so how do I install this thing? Well, I copy this command here, pip install pretty printer. And then in my computer, in the command line, I have to say pip. And on my computer, I'm going to say pip3 because I'm using Python 3 here to see which is Python 2. Pip3 install pretty printer. And the pip command will go to the PyPI archives, download the appropriate file, install it, and then make it available. So now if I say Python 3, I can say import pretty printer, and there we go, it works. It was not installed before, I can assure you of that, right? No, no foolery here. So basically within seconds of finding this module, I was able to install it. Now what if I say pip install pretty printer, and I already have a version installed, and there's a newer version of the internet, it won't actually be updated. I have to say for that pip install minus uh, big U for update, that is a great idea, except if you're on a project where you're worried about lots of dependencies. All right, so you should be careful before doing that. Now, how do I know if this is really a good module or not? Like, how do I know if this package is, um, you know, worthy of my use? How do I know if it's safe to use? Here, I'm going to expand this a little bit here. There we go. How do I know if it's safe? How do I know anything about it? Well, I can look at the home page, and the home page here will show me who has worked on it and how many times. We have nine contributors on 237 commits. This is no longer a one person project who just like updated it in the middle of the night or uploaded in the middle of the night to try to share it with the rest of the Python community. Lots of people are using this, lots of people are contributing to it, which means that the odds are pretty good that it's stable. The odds are pretty good that it'll be maintained. I don't need to worry about it so much. That said, um, you really need to be a little careful when you're downloading things from PyPI because there is always the possibility that someone has put something up with malware or troubles on it. Every so often, it's not very common, but every so often, bad stuff is uploaded to PyPI. So you should really only, I mean, unless you're like me and a little daring, you should really only be uh, downloading stuff that you're pretty sure has lots of users, lots of contributors, is pretty widespread. Not the thing that was uploaded an hour ago, one commit by one person, who knows from where. Um, the other thing you should just take a look at is the license file, all right? So the license says, here we go, MIT license. Everything on PyPI is licensed under an open source license, but where you work might have some restrictions you should worry about. So how do you know if something is worth it or not on PyPI? My suggestion is to go to the site Awesome Python, an amazing site which has categories of all sorts of things. And you want to go to caching? Here we go. Here are some well-known packages on PyPI that are well-maintained, well-known, secure, and so forth. So you should think of Awesome Python as your first stop in figuring out what you'll want to download on a particular topic from PyPI. It does not mean that other things are bad, but it does mean these things are good, or at least considered good, by a lot of people in the Python community. You will undoubtedly download and install stuff from PyPI. You should expect to do that. Um, and so learning to download, use, install, sniff around and see if it's worth it, 
are very, very useful and important skills in working in the Python ecosystem.